The next step in discussing retail pricing is actually talking about how to set retail prices. So pause your lecture now and run and grab your calculator because we're going to dive into the math behind setting retail pricing. All right, first let's talk about um, what the retailer's goal is when they set a price. And that goal is really to maximize profits. Uh, and so what they look at when they set prices is you, you try to understand price sensitivity of your customers, um, at what price they're willing to buy the merchandise. And you also have to look at the cost of the merchandise. So what did you pay for it? And how much money do you need to make on that in order to run a sustainable business? And so we're going to talk today about how to set prices based on that cost of the product. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And most retailers set the price by marking up an item's cost to yield a profitable gross margin. Um, so when we talk about retail price, we look at markup. And when we say the word markup, what we're referring to is the difference between the retail price and the cost of the item. So this is literally the equation here. Uh, markup is retail price minus cost. Um, or retail price is retail price is equal to the cost of the merchandise plus the markup. So you'll see that written back and forth, um, but we're all getting to the same same thing. Uh, so if you think about a toy store that buys a stuffed animal from a vendor for $5, if the cost of the item is $5, yet they sell it to the customer for $20, Right, and I ask you, what is the markup? Well, the markup is $15, right? We take our retail price, which is $20, minus our cost, which is $5, and we get $15. So when we look at our markup, it's $15, or a markup of 300%. And to be perfectly honest with you, that's not unnormal. The second uh, equation that we're going to use today, uh, we're going to look at markup percentage. So when we look at market percentage, it's the markup, but it's expressed as a percentage of the retail price. So the key thing here is we're looking at um, how we're marking up the product as a percentage of the retail price. So we're not looking at cost here. We're looking at retail price. And so we look at market percentage. This is the equation that we're going to use. Retail price minus cost over retail price. So if we want to know the markup percentage of our toy, our stuffed animal, uh, we're going to take our retail price of $20 minus our cost of $5, and we're going to divide that by the retail price. Okay, so we're going to take our markup over the retail price to get our markup percentage, and the markup percentage is 75%. Just kind of a helpful hint as we move forward throughout this uh, lecture, markup percentage is never going to be higher than 100%. Okay, The markup can be higher than 100%, but the markup percentage will not be higher than 100%. Now, um, a lot of times retailers will know the percentage that they need to mark up items in order to meet their financial goals. Uh, we're not going to walk through that process step by step, um, but there are some, some general industry standards um, that we'll use as we work through this chapter, this lecture, um, and also you should know that there is a calculation for how retailers kind of take into consideration um, all of their operating expenses, all of their um, tax expenses, interest expenses, everything they're going to have to cover, and they kind of come up with a general markup percentage that they need uh, to set their prices with in order to kind of cover all of those expenses. Um, but let's walk through a couple more examples today of how we get the markup percentage. So we're going to talk about um, the markup. So let's say we have an item. All right, we're going to say that we have the example in your book uses a tennis racket um, purchased for a sporting goods store. And the cost of that tennis racket was $75. So that's our cost of merchandise. And our markup is $50. That makes our retail price $75 plus $50, or $125. Okay. Now, using these three numbers, we also calculate our markup percentage. right? So we can take our retail price minus our cost over our retail price. So walk through this. Walk through these steps. 
To get the markup percentage, we take the price minus the cost over the price. And you should get 40%. So our markup percentage is 40%. Now, let's think about what would happen if we knew the cost of the merchandise and we knew our standard of our markup percentage and we had to try to calculate what we should set that retail price at. All right, so let's say that we are a um, novelty gift store. Okay, now um, novelty gift stores on average have a markup of about 92%, and that's just industry average. Um, that doesn't take into consideration any store specific information, but on average, the gift, novelty, and souvenir store markup is 92%. So let's say we own a little gift shop on the beach, and we pay $1.15 per coffee mug in our store. That's what our vendor charges us. Now, our markup percentage is 92%. So how do we determine the price that we're going to charge our customers? Well, retail price equals the cost plus the markup. Another way to look at it, retail price equals the cost plus the retail price times the markup percentage. So what does this equation look like? What's the equation we need to actually solve this here? So if we take that second uh, retail price, right, it equals the cost over one minus the markup percentage. So we know our cost and we know our markup percentage. Okay, so how do we get the retail price? All right, so this is the equation we're going to use, cost over 1 minus market percentage. So if we take this, we take the numbers that we have, our mug costs $1.15 from the vendor, our market percentage is 92%, so we would take 1 minus 0.92. So do that math and calculate the retail price of that mug. What are you going to be charged for that mug in the store? $14.39. That would be the retail price you have to set in order to cover all of your expenses at your gift and souvenir shop. So again, this type of markup isn't uncommon. Um, the next time you're in um, Florida or at the beach or at a souvenir shop somewhere and you buy a $15 mug, um, it's interesting to think about now that we've had this retailing course, well, that that retailer probably only paid about $1.15 for that mug. Um, now, this isn't the final step in setting the price. We'll talk about a few other things that factor in. Uh, for example, we haven't yet considered what happens if you put that on sale, what happens if you put it on clearance, uh, what happens if it gets stolen. Right. So there's lots of other things we have to consider. But right now, generally speaking, based on the cost of the merchandise and our average markup percentage, we should be setting our price to $14.39. Let's do another example. Let's say we're Target. And we are going to buy pink t-shirts from our vendor at a cost of $3.75 each. Now, women's clothing, on average, has a market percentage of 75%. So how do we calculate the retail price? Well, there's our equation. Retail price is cost plus the markup. We know the markup is the retail price times the markup percentage. So our equation becomes retail price equals cost over 1 minus the markup percentage. So your math should be set up like this. $3.75 over 1 minus 0.75. What is the cost of that shirt to the customer? Did you get $15? That would be correct. So we know that the cost is $3.75. The markup percentage is 75%. And the retail price is $15. Now, calculate the markup on this t-shirt. Markup is the difference between the retail price 
and the cost of the item. So you should have taken $15 minus $3.75 and you have a markup of $11.25. Now, it's not this simple, right? It's not just this simple. Um, like I mentioned on the mug example, there are a lot of other things that retailers have to consider um, when setting their prices. And so in addition to the cost of the product ex itself, uh, these are just a few other things that they have to think about. Um, a lot of retailers have workroom costs. So the cost of the product doesn't take into consideration the labor uh, behind the product. So maybe um, at Lowe's, they assemble your grill for you. Or maybe at Belk, they alter your soup for you. Right? Those are labor costs that we haven't calculated into our price because we haven't yet looked at anything other than the cost of the merchandise. We haven't taken into consideration our competitor costs, um, what our competitors are setting their retail prices at and what they're paying. We might get some cash discounts from our vendors, and we haven't taken those into consideration. Um, our complimentary merchandise, uh, we haven't taken that into consideration. Are we able to charge a higher price, a higher margin on our uh, cable cords in order to set lower prices on our Blu-ray players? Um, remember, if you talk about that from our merchandise management chapter. We also haven't taken into consideration reductions and markdowns, and this is the big one. Uh, employee discounts, special promotions, end-of-season markdowns. None of that is calculated into the equation we just did. We only looked at the cost of the product and our overall markup percentage that we need to cover that cost. Right? Uh, we also haven't taken into consideration any theft. Theft is a big issue in retailing, um, and you'll read about that in Chapter 16 coming up in Module 7. Um, but we do have to take that into consideration when setting prices. Um, and it's, it's very complex, right? It's not a lot of math we can all do by hand. So a lot of retailers do use their pricing software um, and their price strategists that sit down and use the software to really figure out what is the optimal markup percentage for our specific retail location, not just what's the industry average, um, for a retail markup, but what does our markup need to be in order for us to make a margin? So we're going to look at two more practice problems real quick um, before we wrap up this piece of the lecture. So I would like you to solve this problem. If your cost of your product is $150 and your initial markup percentage is 50% and the item is on sale for 30% off, what is the final selling price? You should get $210 here. Your second question, Men's Warehouse purchased black leather belts for $15.99 each and priced them to sell for $29.99 each. What is the dollar markup on the belts and what is the markup percentage on the belts? Your markup percentage should be 46.7%. So if you have any questions on how we got to those answers, feel free to um, uh, ask it in the course Q&A or the discussion boards um, or converse with your classmates in the discussion boards uh, to understand, um, to make sure you understand how to do that math correctly.